Hey there, my name is Milan and thanks for watching this very first Mage class lesson. It's supposed to be a quick introduction to Mage 2, specifically for people who have experience with Magento 1. So, if you were focused on Mage 1, you probably didn't have enough time to keep on track with the latest practices in software development that you'll be all using in Magento 2. So, what I have here is the latest Magento 2 installation, which has some things in common with Mage 1, but it also has many, many folders and files that are brand new. And that's okay, we can take them one step at a time. I usually like to start off with a very simple example to get the gears going, so to speak. And for this purpose, I have created an extension that echoes out Hello World when you visit first route. And believe it or not, with this simple extension, we'll cover a few important and fundamental concepts, so I expect it to be very useful. So let's quickly see how it's built and what is actually triggering this to appear on the screen. Modules are still defined under App Code, and we can immediately notice the first significant change. No more code pools are present. There are namespaces, all core modules live in Magento namespace, and when you are creating your extension, you need to place it under your namespace as I did here. I called it Mage class, and inside of it, we have a module called First. Now, in order to register your module, you don't create XML file under etc folder as we used to do in Magento 1. You see that modules folder even doesn't exist anymore. That's another difference. Instead, you need to have a module XML in your module with fairly simple declaration. Please ignore this overwhelming config tag, it's a boilerplate code and I don't want you to pay attention about it at all. A bit that is important here is this line, which has a fully qualified name of the module. Next, because we have a custom route called first, we need to place some configuration in XML as you might expect. Now in Magento 1, if you recall, we would declare routes tag in config XML under frontend tag. In Mage 2 though, that frontend node becomes a separate folder that contains routes file. And again, a bit more boilerplate code. The important part is this one, where we have front name and module name. So no big changes here. And then we have a register module in place and our first route. Let's see how controllers look. Well, obviously, it's not controllers with lowercase c, it's just controller singular with capital letter. But before showing you how my controller works, let me walk you through the customer module as a good example of how controllers are generally built in Mage 2. So here we see, for example, account section, and it has around 15 separate files, 15 separate controllers. Basically, what used to be an action in Mage 1 in a single controller is now a dedicated controller like login or logout or create. These are all separate classes. And if we take a closer look, all of them has a method called execute. And this is where real fun begins. Create controller has a constructor that accepts four arguments. Wow, that's a big change, and I guess it's the right time to ask ourselves what the heck is context or registration, and above all, how does this all get passed to the constructor? Why do we have that execute method? When I first saw all of this, I was literally frustrated by all of these terms I knew nothing about. It's so much different than Mage 1. Well, to decode all of this, let's come back to our controller, which is very similar to the customer account create controller that we've just seen. We have a constructor and we type some kind of object. We're saying we expect an instance of Magento framework app action context to be passed in. So if we go there, Magento framework app action, yes, there's a file called context. And it seems like it contains all information about current request, response, action, view, and stuff like that. That's why we potentially needed to include it in our controller. 
But now let's take one step further. This is going to blow your head too. Context class expects many instances in its constructor. So if we go back to our controller, what we have? We define dependencies that also require their dependencies. So what is very confusing is how Magento knows to instantiate all of these classes. If we think about it in a simpler example, if we have, let's say, class A that expects an instance of B in its constructor, in order to instantiate A, we need to say new A and then new B as an argument. Of course, assuming that class B does exist. But take note of the fact that nowhere in our module we did something like new mage class first controller index index and then passed new instance of the context module with all of its dependencies, etc. Luckily, we are not doing anything of this stuff. If we had to, it would be a real pain. So how does this all work then? Well, Magento 2 makes use of PHP feature called Reflection, which allows it to automatically get instances of the dependencies. So basically, what happens behind the scenes is Magento will sort of peek in here and figure out what's going on and what we need. In other words, when this method is called, Magento will inspect the arguments list and go ahead and instantiate them for us. And not only this, when it tries to instantiate context object, it will notice context dependencies, so it will go ahead and create all of them as well. And this will continue up recursively, it will just keep digging down until it instantiates all of the required dependencies for us. Okay, cool, but you might be thinking, why don't we just instantiate these objects by using good old mage class and factory pattern like we always did? Well, that's another important change. Mage class does not exist anymore. It's completely replaced in Magento 2 with the concept of dependency injection. So, whenever you need an object of specific class, you need to inject it in the constructor and the system will instantiate it for you as we have seen. There are actually many reasons for this change. Magento 2 is trying to follow solid principles in which every class should have only one single responsibility. We saw very thin controllers today, but honestly, it's not always the case. There are still many classes that are doing way too much in Magento 2. And I hope it will be refactored until the final release. But you get the idea. If a class instantiates an object on its own, that would break a very common software design principle called separation of concerns. In other words, our controller would know too much when it shouldn't. It doesn't need to know how to create an object, it just needs to know how to access it. With that principle in mind, the code becomes decoupled and more maintainable as class responsibilities are clearly defined. And also, it becomes more testable as you can inject mock dependencies to isolate the code under the test. I hope we'll have videos dedicated to those subjects in the future. For now, if you'd like to fully understand this, you need to understand ideas behind solid principles, and for that I'm going to recommend another set of videos from the latest conference organized by PHP Serbia called Solid A. All talks are available and they will get you in the mindset of thinking in terms of solid. Okay, let's go back to our example and see how would we go about declaring our custom dependencies. What if we want to access any model class from our or any other module? So to begin, within our constructor, just like we did with context, I'm going to request an instance of mage class first model, we'll say test. Now, this class does not exist yet, we'll fix it shortly. Let me go ahead and initialize this instance so we can access it later. Every dependency should be saved in a protected property for later use, so this underscore test equals test. And of course, we need to define protected test. Generally, you will keep seeing this over and over in Magento 2. Just remember the flow. You register a dependency as a constructor argument of a particular type. 
you declare a protected property and save the instantiated object in the property for later use. And that's really all there is to it for constructor dependency injection. Let's try this out, although we know it's going to fail since we haven't defined our test model. Of course, we got an exception and let's see what it says. Argument 2 passed to construct must be an instance of Mage class first model test none given. Yeah, exactly what we expected. Magento tried to instantiate test model, but it couldn't find it. So why don't we go ahead and create one? I'll create model folder and inside of it test.php file with some boilerplate code. I namespace the class at the top. A model class should extend abstract model in order to fully access model's feature, and as we can see, I have a simple function that echoes hello world. We'll call our model function instead of hard-coded value here. So let me clean this up a bit, and I'll say this test, and then I'll call on it say hi. That's it. Let's try this out in the browser, but it's still not going to work. But let's try it. Notice that we got the exact same exception, so what's the problem? We specified correct class type in the constructor and created it in the model folder. Well, the problem is in var generation folder. If we go there, we see a new folder, mage class, that we didn't create. This is also a new concept in Mage2, in which the system generates many boilerplate code for you. So, if we take a look at Mage class first, controller, index, index, interception, I want you to focus only on this section here for now. In the constructor, it looks like it didn't sync up with the latest changes. There's no test dependency in the argument list here. Basically, the file was generated in the first run and has never been updated. So, as a rule of thumb, whenever you are in development mode and you work on a feature that should work, but for some reason it doesn't, check var generation folder and remove generated files. I'll go ahead and delete everything from mage class here. If I come back and attempt to reload the page, notice that it works. And now even constructor in interceptor class includes our dependency. So now, when things are starting to make a little more sense, I'd like to close this up by introducing another very important concept in Magento 2 called factory. You'll see many factory suffixes in the code, so what are factories? Well, by definition, factories are useful when you want to instantiate objects that cannot be injected automatically, when the system doesn't know how to instantiate a class for you. For example, let's say that Instead of displaying hello world, we want to grab a product from the database and display its name. Well, in Magento 1 we used to instantiate product model and call load with specific product ID. In Mage 2, it's a bit different. You can't really call load on product model even if you injected it here in constructor. So, if you have something like Magento, Catalog, model, product, and we'll call it product, this would not work. You're not able to call load on this object. So, the way around this is to use product factory. Rather than requesting product model, I'm going to ask Magento to inject product factory. And then, I'm going to save it in a protected class attribute, as you already know, this product factory equals product factory. And of course, we need to create that attribute at the top. Now, this class, product factory, doesn't exist in the system. It's going to be generated on the fly in var generation and then in this path here. Okay, so now we are going to ask our factory to create or instantiate a product object. Product equals this product factory, and we can call create method on it. And then we can just say product, and then I'll call load on it with some ID. I know 2045 exists. And finally, we can output name like echo 
product get name. Now remember, whenever you edit your class that is already generated in var generation, you need to remove it in order to force Magento to regenerate it with the latest source changes. Here we go. Let's try this out. And seems to work. I think that would be it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.